Welcome to the 2023 CDL Tanker Practice Test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your CDL instructor to walk you through the question. Question 1. What is the term used to describe the movement of liquid when tanks are not completely filled? A. Spilling B. Surging C. Splashing D. Sloshing the correct answer is B. Surging. Surging refers to the shifting and movement of liquid cargo within partially filled tanks. This movement can affect vehicle stability and control, underscoring the importance of cautious driving techniques, particularly when handling turns and stops. Question 2. Why does hauling tank vehicles demand specialized skills? A. The cargo is perishable. B. The center of gravity is higher. C. The routes are longer. D. The vehicles are wider. The correct answer is B. The center of gravity is higher. Hauling tank vehicles requires unique expertise due to the fact that the liquid cargo's movement within the tank can lead to a higher center of gravity, making the vehicle more prone to instability and tipping. Skilled driving techniques are necessary to mitigate these risks and ensure safe transportation. Question 3. What is the term used for the dividers placed inside tankers with openings both at the top and bottom? A. Barriers B. Bulkheads C. Baffles D. Separators The correct answer is C. Baffles Baffles are internal dividers installed within tankers, featuring openings at both ends. These structures help control the movement of liquid cargo reducing sloshing and promoting vehicle stability during transit. Question 4. What is the primary purpose of baffles in a tanker? A. Enhance aerodynamic performance. B. Increase cargo storage capacity. C. Control forward and backward liquid surge. D. Reduce lateral movement during turns. The correct answer is C. Control forward and backward liquid surge. Baffles in a tanker are designed to regulate the movement of liquid cargo within the tank, minimizing both forward and backward surging during acceleration, deceleration, and sudden stops. This feature enhances the vehicle's stability and helps prevent potential accidents caused by uncontrolled liquid movement. Question 5. The driver should exercise special caution concerning the blank when dealing with smaller tanks. A. Higher center of gravity. B. Cargo weight. C. Road conditions. D. Tire pressure. The correct answer is A. Higher center of gravity. With smaller tanks, drivers should be particularly mindful of the higher center of gravity. This characteristic can lead to reduced stability and increased rollover risk, necessitating careful driving practices to ensure safe operation. Question 6. A tank trailer equipped with baffles serves to regulate A. Cargo temperature B. External air pressure C. Vehicle speed D. Movement from front to back The correct answer is D. Movement from front to back Tank trailers featuring baffles aid in managing the forward and backward movement of liquid cargo during transit. This control of surge enhances vehicle stability and prevents the uncontrolled sloshing of liquids, which could compromise safety on the road. Question 7. Why is it advisable not to load a tank trailer to full capacity? A. To minimize road toll costs. B. Liquid expands and can leak out of the trailer. C. To decrease the number of stops. D. To accommodate extra cargo weight. The correct answer is B. Liquid expands and can leak out of the trailer. Loading a tank trailer completely full leaves no room for the liquid cargo to expand due to temperature changes during transit. This expansion can cause pressure, buildup, and even lead to leakage or spillage, creating safety hazards and potential environmental damage. Question 8. A tank vehicle is described as a vehicle designed for transporting A heavy machinery, B, passengers, C, construction materials, D, liquid. The correct answer is 
D liquid. A tank vehicle is specifically designed to transport liquids such as water, chemicals, or other liquids in bulk quantities. These vehicles are equipped with tanks that are tailored to safely hold and transport various types of liquids. Question 9. In the scenario where a bulk tank vehicle is coming to a stop at an intersection with a slippery surface, what is a potential concern? A. The truck may accelerate unexpectedly. B. The liquid movement could push the truck into the intersection. C. The tires will gain better traction. D. The liquid cargo might freeze. The correct answer is B. The liquid movement could push the truck into the intersection. On a slippery surface, the movement of liquid inside the tank as the vehicle comes to a stop could create a force that pushes the truck forward. This highlights the importance of adjusting your braking distance and being cautious to prevent the vehicle from entering the intersection unintentionally. Question 10. Retest markings on a tank vehicle's cargo tank typically A. Show what type of test or inspection was performed. B. Display the driver's last name. C. Reflect the current market price of the cargo. D. Indicate the vehicle's year of manufacture. The correct answer is A. Show what type of test or inspection was performed. Retest markings provide information about the specific type of test or inspection conducted on the cargo tank, helping to ensure that the tank meets safety standards and regulations. These markings are crucial for tracking the tank's compliance and maintenance history. Question 11. Hauling liquids in tankers demands extra attention due to two specific factors. One of these factors is the tanker's blank center of gravity. A. Low. B. High. C. Fixed. D. Dynamic. The correct answer is B. High. Tankers have a high center of gravity, making them more prone to instability and tipping, which requires cautious driving techniques to maintain control and prevent accidents. Question 12. Exercising great caution is vital when operating smooth bore tankers, particularly during instances of A. Adverse weather conditions, B. Sharp turns on straight roads, C. Passing other vehicles, D. Starting or stopping. The correct answer is D. Starting or stopping. Smooth bore tankers lack internal baffles to control liquid movement, making the vehicle susceptible to surge during acceleration or deceleration. Being extra cautious during these maneuvers helps maintain vehicle stability and prevent uncontrolled liquid motion. Question 13. The optimal approach to navigating a curve with a tanker involves reducing your speed to a safe level prior to entering the curve and then blank while traversing it. A. Brake aggressively. B. Apply the parking brake. C. Turn the steering wheel quickly. D. Accelerate slightly. The correct answer is D. Accelerate slightly. When going through a curve with a tanker, applying a slight acceleration helps to maintain consistent and controlled movement, reducing the risk of the liquid cargo sloshing and contributing to better stability throughout the turn. Question 14. Understanding the required outage for the liquids you transport is crucial because A. Some liquids expand more than others when they get warm. B. It determines the maximum driving distance. C. It impacts the vehicle's fuel efficiency. D. It affects the availability of rest stops. The correct answer is A. Some liquids expand more than others when they get warm. Different liquids have varying expansion rates when subjected to temperature changes. Knowing the necessary outage helps prevent overfilling and potential leakage caused by the expansion of liquids as they warm up, promoting safe transportation and preventing spills. Question 15. Baffles within liquid cargo tanks typically do not hinder the surge's movement from A. Front to back B. Side to side C. Bottom to top D. Inside to outside The correct answer is B. Side to side 
While baffles are effective at controlling forward and backward liquid surge, they may not entirely prevent lateral movement, side to side, of the liquid cargo. This underscores the importance of careful driving to manage the potential instability caused by such movements. Question 16. What can you anticipate about the road handling of a truck equipped with a cargo tank containing baffles? A. There will be less front-to-back surge than there is in a tanker without baffles. B. It will require higher fuel consumption. C. It will be difficult to steer. D. It will have reduced cargo capacity. The correct answer is A. There will be less front-to-back surge than there is in a tanker without baffles. The presence of baffles in a cargo tank helps control the forward and backward surge of liquids, resulting in improved stability and reduced sloshing compared to a tanker without baffles. This aids in maintaining better control over the vehicle during transit. Question 17. What can side-to-side -side surge potentially lead to? A. Smooth handling. B. Improved traction. C. Weight distribution. D. Rollover. The correct answer is D. Rollover. Side-to-side -side surge within a tanker can cause instability and tipping, leading to a dangerous situation where the vehicle rolls over. Managing this type of surge is crucial to maintaining vehicle stability and preventing accidents. Question 18. What factor determines the quantity of liquid to be loaded into a tank? A. The tanker's manufacturing date. B. The legal weight limits. C. The driver's preference. D. The road speed limits. The correct answer is B. The legal weight limits. The amount of liquid loaded into a tank must adhere to the legal weight limits specified by regulations. This ensures safe transportation and prevents overloading that could compromise vehicle stability and road safety. Question 19. While driving on a clear night, when dimming your headlights from high to low, you should adjust your speed to ensure you can stop within a. the speed limit, b. the distance of one city block, c. a shorter time than usual, d. the distance you can see ahead. The correct answer is D. The distance you can see ahead. Dimming your headlights improves visibility for both you and other drivers. By adjusting your speed to ensure you can stop within the distance you can see ahead, you enhance your ability to react to unexpected obstacles or hazards on the road. Question 20. What can you anticipate regarding the handling of your cargo tank when it's equipped with baffles? A. There will be less front-to-back surge than there is in tanks without baffles. B. It will reduce the overall cargo capacity. C. It will require more frequent maintenance. D. It will be more difficult to steer. The correct answer is A. There will be less front-to-back surge than there is in tanks without baffles. Baffles in a cargo tank help minimize the movement of liquid cargo resulting in reduced forward and backward surge compared to tanks without baffles. This contributes to better vehicle stability and control during transit. Question 21. What is the term used to describe the liquid-tight partitions between compartments within tanks? A. Dividers. B. Partitions. C. Separators. D. Bulkheads. The correct answer is D. Bulkheads. Bulkheads are the solid partitions inside tanks that effectively create separate compartments, preventing the movement of liquid cargo from one section to another. This design feature helps maintain cargo integrity, stability, and safety during transportation. Question 22. While driving a tank truck, if the front wheels start skidding, what outcome is most likely to happen? A. The vehicle will come to an immediate stop. B. You will continue in a straight line and keep moving forward no matter how much you steer. C. You will be able to steer normally. D. The rear wheels will lift off the ground. The correct answer is B. You will continue in a straight line and keep moving forward no matter how much you steer. 
When the front wheels of a vehicle skid, the loss of steering control makes it difficult to change the vehicle's direction. As a result, the vehicle is likely to maintain its forward motion in the same direction. It was moving before the skid started, regardless of steering input. Question 23. When calculating the appropriate amount of liquid to load into a tank, what factor, as, must be taken into account? A. Current traffic conditions. B. Driver's preference for speed. C. Weight of the liquid. D. Exterior temperature. The correct answer is C. Weight of the liquid. When deciding the quantity of liquid to load into a tank, Considering the weight of the liquid is crucial to ensure that the loaded weight falls within legal limits and maintains vehicle stability, thus promoting safe driving conditions. Question 24. How can you mitigate the impact of liquid surge when driving a tanker? A. Braking far in advance and increasing your stopping distance. B. Using sudden and sharp braking maneuvers. C. Increasing your speed to stabilize the liquid. D. Ignoring the surge and maintaining a constant speed. The correct answer is A. Braking far in advance and increasing your stopping distance. To minimize the effects of liquid surge in a tanker, it's important to anticipate stops and brake earlier than usual, allowing for a greater stopping distance. This approach helps prevent sudden surges in the liquid cargo, enhancing overall vehicle stability and reducing the risk of accidents. Question 25. How can you prevent a tanker from tipping over while navigating a curve? A. Maintain the same speed as other vehicles. B. Apply the brakes suddenly while turning. C. Travel well below the posted speed limit on a curve. D. Speed up to maintain momentum. The correct answer is C. Travel well below the posted speed limit on a curve. Lowering your speed significantly when approaching a curve reduces the risk of rollovers, especially for tankers, which have a higher center of gravity and are more susceptible to tipping during turns. Question 26. What feature characterizes a baffled tanker's construction? A. Interior bulkheads with holes that let the liquid flow through. B. Transparent viewing panels. C. Reinforced exterior shell. D. Vents for pressure release. The correct answer is A. Interior bulkheads with holes that let the liquid flow through. Baffled tankers utilize these perforated partitions to regulate liquid movement and minimize surge, ensuring better control and stability during transportation. Question 27. What type of cargo is commonly transported using a smooth bore tanker? A. Hazardous chemicals. B. Construction materials. C. Milk or food products. D. Heavy machinery. The correct answer is C. Milk or food products. Smooth bore tankers are frequently employed for transporting liquids like milk and various food products due to their internal design, which minimizes liquid surge and ensures safe delivery of these sensitive cargoes. Question 28. What attribute contributes to the increased difficulty in handling liquid tankers? A. High center of gravity of the cargo. B. Narrow width of the tires. C. Lighter weight of the tanker. D. Smooth road conditions. The correct answer is A. High center of gravity of the cargo. The positioning of the cargo's center of gravity higher up in the tanker can lead to instability and challenges in maneuvering, emphasizing the need for cautious driving techniques. Question 29. What term is commonly used to describe a tank that lacks internal baffles? A. Multi-compartment tanker. B. Unbaffled liquid tank. C. Reinforced liquid container. D. High-capacity cargo vessel. The correct answer is B. Unbaffled liquid tank. An unbaffled liquid tank, often referred to as a smooth bore tank, lacks internal partitions, baffles, leading to increased liquid movement and surge during transport, requiring careful handling. Question 30. How is outage defined in the context of tanker transportation? A. 
the amount of liquid spilled during loading. B. Free space left in a tanker to allow for expansion of the liquid from temperature changes. C. The time taken for unloading a tanker. D. The distance between two tankers on the road. The correct answer is B. Free space left in a tanker to allow for expansion of the liquid from temperature changes. Outage is a crucial consideration to prevent overfilling and accommodate potential volume changes due to varying temperatures, promoting safe and efficient liquid transport. Question 31. When should you exercise heightened caution while operating a smooth bore tanker? A. During clear weather conditions. B. While maintaining a constant speed. C. When navigating sharp turns. D. When starting and stopping. The correct answer is D. When starting and stopping, smooth bore tankers lack internal baffles, making them susceptible to liquid surge, especially during acceleration and deceleration, which calls for careful driving techniques to ensure stability and control. Question 32. What term describes the phenomenon of liquid movement within a partially filled tanker truck? A. Wave propagation. B. Vibration. C. Surge. D. Roll effect. The correct answer is C. Surge. Surge refers to the movement of liquid back and forth within a partially filled tanker during acceleration, deceleration, or sudden maneuvers, which can affect the vehicle's stability and handling. Question 33. What is the reason behind the need for specialized skills and knowledge to operate a tanker? A. Tankers are immune to rollover risks. B. Tankers have a high center of gravity. C. Tankers are immune to traffic regulations. D. Tankers have automatic braking systems. The correct answer is B. Tankers have a high center of gravity. Special skills and knowledge are essential when driving tankers due to their elevated center of gravity, making them more susceptible to rollovers. This understanding helps drivers adopt appropriate techniques to handle these vehicles safely and effectively, particularly when navigating corners or sudden maneuvers. Question 34. What is the term used for the partitions with perforations found inside tankers? A. Bulkheads. B. Enclosures. C. Separators. D. Baffles. The correct answer is D. Baffles. These partitions, known as baffles, have holes that allow controlled liquid flow between compartments, helping to reduce liquid surge and enhance the stability of the tanker during transportation. Question 35. What is the purpose of incorporating baffles in certain tankers? A. To control forward and back liquid surge. B. To reduce vehicle weight. C. To improve aerodynamics. D. To enhance interior lighting. The correct answer is A. To control forward and back liquid surge. Baffles are employed in tankers to prevent excessive movement of liquid cargo during acceleration, deceleration, or turns, thereby promoting better vehicle stability and safer transport. Question 36. What is the reason for maintaining adequate outage in a tanker truck? A. To increase cargo capacity. B. To improve vehicle fuel efficiency. C. To reduce the chance of leaks due to liquid expansion. D. To enhance braking performance. The correct answer is C. To reduce the chance of leaks due to liquid expansion. Allowing space for liquid expansion within the tanker helps prevent overpressure and potential leaks, ensuring safe and compliant transportation of liquids. Question 37. What is the recommended driving approach for navigating curves with a tanker vehicle? A. Slow down before the curve, then accelerate through the curve. B. Use the brakes frequently to control speed. C. Maintain a constant speed throughout the curve. D. Increase speed to quickly exit the curve. The correct answer is A. Slow down before the curve, then accelerate through the curve. This technique allows for better control and stability during the curve, reducing the risk of potential rollovers or loss of control that can be associated with tankers. Question 38. 
What is the significance of understanding outage requirements when transporting liquids in bulk? A. To calculate the vehicle's weight capacity. B. Outage requirements vary across liquids. C. Outage requirements are a legal mandate. D. To estimate travel time. The correct answer is B. Outage requirements vary across liquids. Different liquids exhibit varying expansion characteristics, necessitating knowledge of outage requirements to ensure proper loading and prevent overfilling, which could lead to hazardous conditions or regulatory violations. Question 39. In which direction is the movement of surge typically not restricted by baffled tanks? A. Front to back. B. Up and down. C. Side to side. D. Left to right. The correct answer is C. Side to side. While baffled tanks are effective in controlling front to back surge, they may still allow some movement of liquid from side to side within the compartments, which is important to consider for safe handling during transport. Question 40. What distinguishes the handling characteristics of a baffled tanker from a tanker equipped with baffles? A. Baffled tankers have lower weight capacity. B. Baffled tankers require higher tire pressure. C. Baffled tankers have a higher center of gravity. D. The baffled tanker will have less front-to-back surge than the unbaffled tanker. The correct answer is D. The baffled tanker will have less front-to-back surge than the unbaffled tanker. Baffles in a tanker help minimize liquid movement and surge, resulting in improved stability and control during acceleration, deceleration, and maneuvering, particularly in the front-to-back direction. Question 41. What is a potential risk associated with side-to-side -side surge? A. Spillage. B. Increased speed. C. Rollover. D. Reduced visibility. The correct answer is C. Rollover. Side-to-side -side surge can lead to instability and tipping, causing the vehicle to roll over, posing a significant danger to the driver and others on the road. Question 42. What term refers to a liquid-tight partition within a tank that separates compartments? A. Baffle. B. Bulkhead. C. Separator. D. Divider. The correct answer is B. Bulkhead. A bulkhead is a sturdy and leak-proof barrier inside a tank that prevents liquid from flowing between compartments, contributing to the safe and controlled transport of various liquids. Question 43. A cargo tank can also be defined as bulk packaging, which has a water capacity exceeding blank as a receptacle for a gas. A. 1,000 pounds. B. 500 pounds. C. 750 pounds. D. 1,500 pounds. The correct answer is A. 1,000 pounds. A cargo tank is also referred to as bulk packaging, which is packaging other than a vessel or a barge, including a transport vehicle in which hazardous materials are loaded and has a water capacity exceeding 1,000 pounds as a receptacle for gas. Question 44. Drivers of tank vehicles who haul hazardous materials or waste in amounts requiring placards must add AN blank endorsement to their CDL. A. X. B. T. C. Z. D. P. The correct answer is A. X. Drivers of tank vehicles who haul hazardous materials or waste in amounts requiring placards must add an X endorsement to their CDL. Question 45. A. C. L. P. Commercial Learner's Permit. Holder with an N endorsement may only operate in blank tank vehicle and is prohibited from operating any tank vehicle that previously contained hazardous materials that has not been purged of any residue. A. Loaded. B. Partially loaded. C. Water. D. Empty. The correct answer is D. Empty. A CLP, Commercial Learner's Permit, holder with an N endorsement may only operate an empty tank vehicle and is prohibited from operating any tank vehicle that previously contained hazardous materials that has not been purged of any residue. Question 46. If a CLP, Commercial Learner's Permit, is issued with a tanker N endorsement, what restriction must it also contain? A. P. No passengers. B. 
X no cargo in a CMV tank. C. S no hazmat in cargo tank. D. W no water in cargo tank. The correct answer is B. X no cargo in a CMV tank. Commercial learners permit holders are forbidden to haul cargo in a CMV tank. Question 47. Unbaffled tanks are those that usually transport A. Dense liquids such as some acids. B. Hazmat products such as gasoline. C. Liquid gas products such as propane. D. Food grade products such as milk. The correct answer is D. Food grade products such as milk. Unbaffled tanks are usually those that transport food products such as milk. Sanitation regulations forbid the use of baffles because of the difficulty in cleaning the inside of the tank. Question 48. Some liquid tanks are divided into several smaller tanks by a. Surgus b. Baffles c. Bulkheads d. Smoothbore tanks. The correct answer is c. Bulkheads. Some liquid tanks are divided into several smaller tanks by bulkheads, which create a smaller tanks within the tank vehicle. Question 49. If a tank vehicle has the following special purpose equipment, ensure that it works. A. Vapor recovery kits, grounding and bonding cables, emergency shutoff systems, built-in fire extinguisher. B. Valve release kits, grounding and bonding cables, emergency generator built-in batteries. C. Grounding and bonding cables. Emergency phone system. Built-in mount socket. D. Optic socket. Scully groundhog system. Emergency shut-on system. The correct answer is A. Vapor recovery kits. Grounding and bonding cables. Emergency shut-off systems. Built-in fire extinguisher. Vapor recovery kits. Grounding and bonding cables. Emergency shutoff systems and built-in fire extinguishers are some very important life-saving and special purpose equipment in which the driver of a tank vehicle must be familiar with. It is extremely important to be sure that they are in good working order. Question 50. On all tank vehicles, the most important item to check for is A. Missing hoses B. To ensure that the vehicle is properly placarded C tire pressure, D, leaks. The correct answer is D, leaks. Driving a tank vehicle with leaks can have extreme consequences. Fines can be imposed as a result. Question 51. Tank vehicles come in various types and sizes. Be sure to check the blank to make sure the vehicle's pre- and post-trip inspections are correctly done. A. FMCSA's website for updated tanker regulations. B. Company's MSDS, Material Safety Data Sheet, Procedures, C. Operator's Manual, D. Shipping Requirements. The correct answer is C. Operator's Manual. Because tank vehicles come in many types and sizes and have a variety of features as well as special purpose equipment, it is important to check the vehicle's operator manual to be sure it is being inspected correctly. Ultimately, the driver will be responsible for the maneuvering of the vehicle. It is important to fully know the equipment. Question 52. Federal regulations state that a driver cannot operate a CMV, commercial motor vehicle, until satisfied that it is in good working order. What are some of the items that are not officially inspected prior to operating a tank vehicle? A. Paper logs, cell phone battery levels, radio transmission quality, sleeper berth area, bunk heater. B. Parking brake, steering mechanism, lighting devices and reflectors, mirrors, coupling devices, wheels and rims, hoses, emergency equipment, and frame of the tank vehicle. C. Wheels and rims, flares, engine oil levels, doors, transmission controls, gaskets, and seals. D. Windshield wiper fluid, windshield and wipers, properly charged and rated fire extinguisher, warning lights and buzzers. The correct answer is A. Paper logs, cell phone battery levels, radio transmission quality, sleeper berth area, bunk heater. Cell phone battery levels and radio transmission quality 
are not items that are checked during an official pre-trip inspection. Question 53. The oil pressure level of a tank vehicle while idling should be A. 30 to 50 PSI B. 0 to 15 PSI C. 5 to 20 PSI D. 60 to 75 PSI The correct answer is C. 5 to 20 PSI While idling a CMV, the normal oil pressure range should be between 5 to 20 PSI. If readings are low, dropping or fluctuating, have a maintenance check performed immediately. Without oil, the engine can be rapidly destroyed. Question 54. While inspecting a tank vehicle, it is important to check manhole covers by ensuring that they have gaskets and can close correctly. If not, A. Vents will not work. B. The vehicle will not be grounded. C. Hot air can escape. D. Leaks can occur. The correct answer is D. Leaks can occur. Manhole covers on tank vehicles have gaskets to prevent leaks if the vehicle were to roll over in an accident or when the vehicle bounces while driving. Question 55. While inspecting a tank vehicle hauling hazardous materials, it is also important to ensure that A. Vents are covered to prevent vapors from escaping. B. Vents are closed while being inspected. C. Vents are removed after inspection. D. Vents are clear so that they work correctly. The correct answer is D. Vents are clear so that they work correctly. If the vents are clogged and filled with debris, the venting system may not work properly, causing a backup of harmful fumes and vapors. Question 56. Prior to driving a tank vehicle with Class 1 hazmat liquid or gas, placards must be A. Properly secured to the left, front, right, and back sides of the vehicle. B. Properly secured to both sides of the vehicle only. C. Not needed if hauling less than 30,000 gallons of hazmat. D. Properly secured to the back, with the shipping papers and emergency response guide in the driver's side door. The correct answer is A. Properly secured to the left, front, right, and back sides of the vehicle. A placarded vehicle must have at least four identical placards. They are put on the front, rear, and both sides of the vehicle. Question 57. What must appear on cargo tanks hauling hazardous material? A. A cage surrounding the tanker. B. Six-inch placards on four sides of tank. C. Four-digit identification numbers. D. Six-digit identification numbers. The correct answer is C. Four-digit identification numbers. Cargo tanks and other bulk packaging must display the identification number of their contents on placards or orange panels. Question 58. The amount of density, heavy, liquid, such as some acids, that can be loaded into a tank. Vehicle depends on A. The type of surge that will occur, the center of gravity, the size of the tank. B. The amount the liquid will expand in transit, the weight of the liquid, legal weight limits. C. The amount the liquid will expand in transit, legal weight limits, the center of gravity. D. The amount of baffles, the length of the trip, the weight listed on shipping papers. The correct answer is B. The amount the liquid will expand in transit, the weight of the liquid, legal weight limits. A full tank of dense liquid, such as some acids, may exceed legal weight limits. For that reason, tanks with heavy liquids are often only partially filled. The amount of liquid to load into a tank depends on the amount the liquid will expand in transit, the weight of the liquid and legal weight limits. Question 59. The person in charge of loading and unloading a propane cargo tank. A. Must be the same person loading and unloading the tank. B. Must be a minimum of 100 feet away at all times. C. Must be a minimum of 250 feet away at all times. D. Must be sure that a qualified person is always watching. The correct answer is D. Must be sure that a qualified person is always watching. The person in charge of loading and unloading a cargo tank 
must be sure a qualified person is always watching. The person in charge, however, does not need to be the same person who is watching. Question 60. What is the primary purpose of a baffled tanker trailer in a CDL tanker vehicle? A. To reduce the risk of rollovers during transport. B. To increase the maximum load capacity of the tanker trailer. C. To improve fuel efficiency of the tanker vehicle. D. To decrease the stopping distance of the tanker vehicle. The correct answer is A. To reduce the risk of rollovers during transport. A baffled tanker trailer uses internal partitions called baffles to prevent liquid cargo from shifting and sloshing during transport. This maintains the stability of the vehicle, reduces the risk of rollovers, and ensures safe transportation of the cargo. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your CDL exam on your first try.